A list is a data structure in Python that is mutable or changeable, ordered sequence of elements. So these lists provide a smooth way to organize your data, making everything easier to track, control, and analyze. Understanding this, we have come up with this video on list in Python. Now, before we go ahead with the session, I'd like to inform that we have launched a completely free platform called as Great Learning Academy, where you have access to free courses such as AI, cloud and digital marketing. You can check out the details in the description below. Now we'll go ahead and work with the next data structure in Python, which is a list. So when it came to a tuple, that was an ordered collection of elements enclosed within round braces. But a list is an ordered collection of elements which is enclosed within square braces. And that is not the only difference. So tuples were immutable. That is when you created the elements inside a tuple, you could not change them later on. But when you create a list, you can actually change the values which are present in it. And this is how we create a list. So L1, that is the name of the list which I'm creating and I'll have square braces and I'll have these different elements stored inside it. Let me delete all of these over here and let me start fresh for the list. I'll add a new comment, which will be list. And inside this, I'll name the object as L1. I'll have square braces over here. I'll have one, A and true. Let me print out L1. And this is our new list. Now let me go ahead and check the type of this. Inside type, I will pass in L1. And as you guys see, this tells us that this is a list. Now, as we had extracted individual elements from a tuple, similarly, we can go ahead and extract individual elements from a list as well. And it is the same process. So over here, we've got all of these elements and the indexing starts from zero. So it is very important. Keep in mind, guys. So the indexing of a list or whatever data structure you're working with in Python, it starts from zero. And if I want to extract the second element over here, the index of the second element will be one because this is index number zero. This is index number one. And when I pass in L1 of one, I'll be able to extract this particular element from this entire list. Similarly, if I want to extract a series of elements, so I've got all of these. If I want to start from index number two, so this will be index number two. So we've got zero, one and two, and this will go on till index number four. So as I've already told you, when it comes to Python, the outer limit is exclusive. So when we give it till five, we will be only able to extract till index number four. So that is why over here we'll be extracting two, B and three. Let me create L2 over here and I'll have some elements. I'll have one A, then I'll have two, then I'll have B. After that, I'll have three and going ahead. I'll also have C over here. I have successfully created L2. Let me print this out. And now if I want to extract, let's say B from this, let's see what would be the index will be zero, one, two and three. So I'd have to give in L2 inside the parenthesis. I'd have to give in three and I am able to extract this particular element from this. Similarly, if I want to extract the last element, I'll give in L2. I'll give in minus one over here and I'm able to extract the last element. And if I want to extract a series of elements, then in that case, all I have to do is give in L2. And as we saw in the example, if I want to extract two B and three, so the index for this is zero, one and two, I'll give in two over here. And if I want to extract till three, so this will be two, three and four. So that is why I'd have to give in index number five as well. And we are able to extract two B and three from this entire list. Now let's see how can we modify a list. So we have the same list over here. And initially at index number zero, we have the element one. But if I want to change it to some other element, all I have to do is given the index number and I have to assign a new value to that particular index number. So as you guys see, I am assigning the value of 100 to this particular index number and I'm able to change this value of one to 100. Now we can also append a new element at the end or pop the last element and to add a new element at the end, we will be using the append method. 
So we'd have to give in the name of the list. We'll use dot operator and then we'll use the append method and we'll just give in the value which we'd want to append. So when I type in Sparta over here, this gets appended at the end of the list. Now similarly, we can go ahead and pop the last element. So if we have to pop the last element, popping basically means removing the last element. So we would have to use l1.pop and it automatically removes the last element. So as you guys see, we had added Sparta, but after using the pop method, this Sparta value was removed from this list. Now we have the same list over here, which is l1. Let me actually, I'll have L2 over here, not L1. Let me print in L2 for you guys over here. And I'd want to change, let's say, this particular value over here. So let's say instead of A, I'd want Z. So I'll have L2 and the index for that is 1. And instead of A, I'd want to store Z inside this. And let me print out L2 again. So initially we had A, but after changing it, we have Z over there. Now we'll see how to append an element at the end of this list. So we'd have to give in L2, I'll use dot operator, then I'll be using the append method. And inside this, I'll just add this word called as Python. Let me print in L2 for you guys. And I have added Python at the end of this. Now if I want to pop this out, I have to write L2 dot pop. And when I click on run, we see that this has been popped out and let me print out L2 again for your reference. We see that the last element has been removed. Now there are some more modifications which we can perform on the list. So let's say if we want to reverse the elements which are present in a list. So as you see in L1, we have all of these elements over here. And if I want to reverse the order of these elements, all I have to do is use the reverse method. So I'll type in L1 dot reverse. And when I print this out, we see that the elements are printed backward. Then if we want to insert an element at one particular index value. So when we use the append method, we were able to add an element at the end of a list. But instead of adding an element at the end of a list, if we want to insert an element at some particular index, then this is how we can do. So I'll have L1 dot insert, then I'll give the index position where I'd want to insert. So initially at index number one, we had this value A, but now at index number one, I want to insert Sparta. So this takes in two parameters. First parameter is the index at which I'd want to insert. Second parameter is the value which I'd want to insert. And as you guys see, I have inserted Sparta at index number one. Now. Here, as you see, the rest of the elements have been shifted one index towards the right. So A, which was initially present at index number one, is now present at index number two. Two, which was initially present at index number two, is now shifted to index number three. So each element shifts towards the right by one index value. Then we can also go ahead and sort a list. So we have all of these elements over here. Now, if you want to sort these elements in alphabetical order, then we can just go ahead and use the sort method and this sort method sorts all of these with respect to alphabet. So we have apple followed by banana followed by guava and then finally we have mango. So let's use the reverse method insert method and the sort method in Jupyter notebook. So we have the same L2 over here. Now if I want to reverse this, I'll just type in L2 dot reverse and when I click on run, this has been executed. Now let me print in L2. So as you guys see, initially we had this particular sequence over here, which was 1, Z, 2, B, 3, and C. And after using the reverse method, the elements have been reversed. Now we'll go ahead and add an element at one particular index. So if I want to add something at maybe index number 3, so now we've got 0, 1, 2, 3. So we've got 2, which is present at index number 3. But now let's say I'll have L2 dot insert and at index number three, I'd want to insert great learning and let me hit run and let me print out L2. And as you guys see at index number three, I have inserted great learning and the elements which are followed after that shift towards the right by one index value. Now, finally, we'll see how to sort a list. So I'll have L3 and inside this I'll have some elements. So I will have apple. After that I'll have mango. Then 
let me actually change the sequence over here. So let me start off with mango first. Then I'll have apple. Going ahead, I'll have guava. And then maybe I'll have lychee. Now, this is the sequence which is present in this list. And if I want to sort this out, I would just have to use the sort method. So when I hit L3.sort, so this has to be a list and not a tuple. So this has to be square braces. You guys have to keep that in mind. Let me change this over here. Let me cut all of this out and let me paste it over here. And as you guys see, this method has been executed. And when I hit on run, we have changed the order. So we've got apple followed by guava, followed by lychee, and we have mango at the last. Now we can also perform the same concatenation and repeating operations on list as well. So here we have L1 where we have the elements 1, 2 and 3. Then we have L2 where we have the elements A, B and C. And if I want to concatenate this L2 at the end of L1, all I have to do is use the plus operator. And when I use L1 plus L2, this is what I get. I'll have 1, 2, 3, A, B and C. And if I want to repeat the elements which are present in a list, I would just have to multiply the name of the list with a particular scalar number. So as you guys see, I am multiplying L1 with 3 and I have repeated these elements three times. So here I'll just have concatenating a list and I'll have I'll just go ahead and create two lists over here inside L1. I'll have one, two and three. Inside L2, I will have A, B, and I'll also have C. And now I'll perform L1 plus L2. And we have appended L2 at the end of L1. So you'd have to understand that L1 plus L2 and L2 plus L1 would give you different results. So now when I actually type in L2 plus L1, you would see that we have appended L1 at the end of L2. So this sequence also changes when you change the sequence with the plus operator over here. Now let's go ahead and repeat the element. So I'll have repeat the list. And I let's say if I want to repeat the elements which are present in L2. So I'll just multiply L2 with let's say 5 because I want the elements to be repeated 5 times. So I have A, B and C being repeated 5 times. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on list in Python. Now before you guys sign off, I'd like to inform that we have launched a completely free platform called as Great Learning Academy, where you have access to free courses such as AI Cloud and Digital Marketing. So thank you very much for attending this session and have a great learning ahead.